We're about to get started, so we're just asking everyone to come all the way forward. Family, friends, well, we just come all the way forward. Occupy the seats all the way up in front as this is a small gathering. We'll have... we're going to ask and for the next five minutes after we have our opening prayer we're going to ask the musicians or the just continue playing some praise and worship songs and the ministers will take over as they open the casket So I'll be back with you in one minute. All right, the casket is open. Anyone, you can go, you have two minutes to have a, a view, and then you can come right forward again. So in the next two minutes, we shall have an opening prayer after they have finished viewing.
Okay, everyone, we're getting ready to start. Um, we're asking everyone to come all the way up front, please. It's a small gathering, so we'd like everyone just to come all the way up front. It can occupy both sides. Everyone who's seated in the house, just come all the way up front. As we're about to start, we're going to have our opening prayer and then continue with that lovely congregational song that the band was playing. Okay, we just about to pray and, and start. Uh, okay, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning to give you praise and thanks, O God, for sparing our lives and for bringing us together in your sanctuary, O God, to celebrate the life, though it was a short one of little more. Father God, we want to thank you for those gathered here to give her a good send-off. It is your child and you have called her home and we thank you for the moments and the times that we all had to spend with her. Please bless these proceedings, O oh God, and may everything be done to your names, praise, honor, and glory. We ask all these mercies through Jesus Christ, your son. Amen. Okay, so we shall just sing a couple of congregational songs and then... Um, you have to modify the program in order to get the timing going. So, and in the sweet by and by. Just give me one second. Let me just get it on the pull it up on the. is fairer than day, and by faith we shall see it afar, for the Father waits over the way, to prepare us a dwelling place there, in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful show in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore we shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious songs of the blessed and our spirits shall sorrow no more not a sigh for the blessing of rest in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore to our bountiful Father above, we will offer a tribute of praise for the glorious gift of his love and the blessings that hallow our days in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful Show in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful. 
beautiful soul. There's a song in the Adventist hymnal that says, Oh, there'll be joy when the work is done, joy when the reapers gather home, bringing the sheaves to the set of sun, to the new Jerusalem. Oh, there'll be joy when the work is done. There'll be joy when the work is done. Wait, let's sing. Oh, there'll be joy when the work is done. Joy when the reapers gather home. Bringing the sheaves of the set of sun to the new Jerusalem. Joy, joy, there'll be joy by and by. Joy, joy, when the joy never dies. Joy, joy for the day, joy at night when the workers gather home. Sweet are the songs that we hope to sing. Grateful the thanks our hearts shall bring. Praising forever. Christ talking in the new Jerusalem. Joy, joy, there'll be joy by and by. Joy, joy, where the joys never die. Joy, joy for the day, joy at night when the us there, many the golden mansions fair, Jesus himself doth them prepare in the new Jerusalem, joy, joy, there'll be joy by and by, joy, joy, where the joy never dies, joy, Joy at night when the workers gather home. One more time, joy, joy, joy. There'll be joy by and by. Joy, joy, where the joys never die. Joy, joy for the day. Joy at night when the workers gather. Musicians play the entry tune for the ministers to take the stand. I will take my departure for now because the ministers are about to enter the pulpit. Inviting everyone to please stand. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, 
I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. That where I am, there he may be also. We shall remain standing at this time. The one who is truly God, we have come before you at this time. We want to thank you, dear Lord, for your presence. And wherever you are, Lord, if we, by faith, reach out to you, at any time we will find that there is hope in you, there is peace in you, there is, dear Lord, strength in you. We pray as we celebrate the life of our young one that all this and more will be found in this service. Be in full control, be with the mother, be with all the relatives, be with each one of us. Use even your servant, uh, Evangelist Roger Allen, in a special way today. And we give you thanks for answering this prayer in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Pleasant good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon. I cannot say that I feel what you are feeling this afternoon, but what I can say is that I identify with you because it's not an easy thing to lose a baby, you know, lose the new love of your life in such a short space of time. And so this afternoon, I want to let you know that as a church, we stand with you. Our support is with you. And our prayers, and most importantly, the comfort of the Holy Spirit is with you in this time of grief. So on behalf of the pastors, the elders, uh, the and members of this church here at Canaan, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we would like to express our sincere and deepest condolences to you and your family this time of grief. Be assured that our prayers are with you, our thoughts are with you, and you are not alone. Amen? You are not alone. So God bless you, and may this, may this service today bring comfort to your hearts in this time of grief knowing that God is right there with you in this time of trouble. So God bless you as we continue with the program. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Rouse. At this time, we will have, uh, because of the adjustments of the program, we will now have our scripture reading to be done by Brother Malachi Thomas. Right, Brother Malachi, to come to the. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hello. I am Brother Malachi Thomas, and I will, and today I will be doing a scripture reading. The, the scripture is taken from Isaiah chapter 11, verse 6. 
and it reads as follows. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. Here ends the reading of the word of the Lord. Amen. All right, thank you very much. At this time, we want to have, according to the, the program, some tributes to, um, to Mariah. At this time, some tributes to Mariah. So those who are, those who are responsible for um, doing these tributes, or if we have no one responsible and there are folks there who just want to share, um, this is your time. To do so, you can come right here at the lower podium and give your tribute at this time. Thank you kindly. I guess, I guess um, nobody has anything to say. Okay, somebody's coming. Thank you kindly. Okay, good evening, everyone. Hello. All right. Yet, yeah, even though it's a very sad moment, um, I just want to let us understand that we live in a world where, this, where death will, will come. To Shelly is my niece. She's actually my great niece. Um, her mom, we have Kamala and Pamela, they are my nieces, so she's my great niece. And the baby, Mariah, is actually my great, great niece. I may not look like a, you know, an aunt that's have all these big nieces, but um, I just want to encourage you and let you know that with God, all things are possible. You will never be alone. I want you to also remember that when Christ left heaven, the heavenly father definitely missed his son. And that son came and gave up everything for us. The loss is great. Yes, she's, you know, it might have been just three months. But that miss, that love a mother has for their children will linger on for the rest of your life. But know fully well that if Christ did it, we all need to be comforted that one day God is going to make all things new. We're not going to have any more sorrow or sadness. I was not able to meet Mariah because I was, I'm not living, actually living here. I'm actually on vacation. And I, you know, it all happened while I'm here. So I'm really blessed to an extent that I'm here, even though death exists. But I'm happy to know that we all have a family. And this is my original church, Canaan. Okay? So Shelly, you're in good hands with the church and especially with God. Your little one, rest assured, all will be well. So the rest of the family, keep trusting in God that he will take care of you. Amen, amen. We want to thank you for those very comforting and encouraging words of tribute and reflection. We will now prepare to have the eulogy done by Shikwaya. George, she will be coming now, and we're asking her to also use the lower podium 
to do the eulogy. After she completes sharing with us the eulogy, we will be having a dance, special item. And uh, I do hope that as we view and listen, it will continue to bring peace and uplift our spirits even in this time of grief. So we welcome now she choir Joe. All right, we are making a, a little adjustment. We will have the dance before the eulogy. So I'm just asking the person who may be playing some music in the background to uh, know that we are going to do the dance at this time. I worship you. I worship you. 
Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, we thank all those who would have prepared them to render this item. And uh, we continue to worship him. Amen? He is, uh, he is worthy. He is uh, the one who says uh, that weeping will only endure. He is the one who says uh, that uh, one day soon all all things will be made right. Let's continue to trust him in spite of what's happening around us or with us. So we are ready for, okay, we just need a little more time before the eulogy will be rendered to us. And so we will want to just share with you that as we get ready for the eulogy, we want to thank all those who are here and we say that friendship is really tested when things happen that require us to make sacrifices to be with our friends. When it's easy to be with our friends, uh, that's not the test of our friendship, but when it requires sacrifice. And so to all of you, on behalf of the family who would have come from near and from far, we really want to thank you again for how you are given support by the sacrifices that you have made to be with us. I look at the t-shirts that were done, whoever is the designer, and uh, we want to say thanks, and uh, may we continue to find strength as we pray for the family. So we will be getting ready for the sermon at this time, just less than two days ago he was uh, in Panama. Uh, festival festival that took place in Panama and uh, he got a message that he was being asked as soon as he comes back to prepare to do this message and we want to thank God for his safe flight even evangelist Roger Allen one who has been um, doing for God's kingdom great in sharing messages around the world and at this time as he prepares to stand before you and before us we, we pray that God will use him truly in a mighty way so at this time I welcome to share God's message at this time evangelist Roger Allen Good day, everybody. How are you this morning? I think you can you can still speak. How are you this morning? All right.
This baby is a very special baby. No one else in this world could allow such composition of people to come at one place at this time. Shalice, I told Samantha, I don't want to hold the baby just yet. For I'm a bit nervous when babies are so small. I mean, when I say small, one day old, two day old, month old, I'm a bit nervous. So I told Samantha, when the baby gets a little older, I will come and lift her up and, you know, this kind of stuff. Yeah. So I did not get a chance to hold your baby. Normally when I preach sermons, it's for everybody. This one is going to be specifically for you. All right, I remember the first time I met you. You still have the same smile on your face. You're still laughing. And it's good to know that you could laugh today. So this sermon is especially for you. The others will listen. But this sermon is especially for you. Father, the sun is still in the sky. Yes, the place is warm, but we still thank you for the sun. Today, as we go into your word and give hope and comfort, may the presence of your Holy Spirit rest upon us. May you bring comfort to Shalice and the entire family. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Samantha, it's nice to see you as well. I'm back. Yes, I'm back. Chalice, I would like to ask you three questions. If you choose to stand, you, you can stand. If you want to sit where you are and just raise your hand, you can do the same thing. It's my intention to make you laugh and smile through this, right? So my first question to you, you could raise your hand. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life? Right, you could, you could sit, you could sit, you could raise your hand, right? So she answered. She said, yes. All right. Question number two. Would you like to see your child again? Right, good. And the third one. Following Jesus Christ's example, are you a baptized man? Thank you so very much, my dear. You have done well. All right. I remembered when the call came And Elder Moses told me that Shalice is in the hospital. Let me watch my time. Shalice is in the hospital and she is not doing well and she is in the ICU. I said, Moses, it's just yesterday we talked. And he said, yes. And he said that she is not doing so well, so... She requesting that we come and pray for her. Pastor McKenzie and I went to the hospital. And knowing Shalice, when we went in, it was COVID time, so you know all the protocols. And so when we went in, we have to put on a suit. And when we went in, this is Shelley smiling just like she is there now. She said, I said, you all right? She said, yes. And then blood was needed and they were having some challenges and called me and I said, hold one second. I, I have a friend who has a lot of blood. So I called him immediately. I said, I need you to get to the hospital. He said, just give me the name and I'm going up now. So he went to the hospital and he donated the blood. Another person came and they donated blood. About a few weeks after, we got the news that she had a bouncing baby girl. And with that bouncing baby girl, it was a joy to all of us. 
to see how God could move people from one place to the next, to the next, to the next, and give them deliverance. And when I heard the baby's name, Mariah, it reminds me of Mariah. It reminds me of the place of sacrifice in the Bible. I know you all are following me. And I know you sacrificed and you gave your all and you prayed and you believe in God and all the things that came along. But today I want to reassure you of something. You have answered to the question, Jesus is the resurrection of the life. You have answered to the question, you would like to see your child again. And you have answered to the question that you are a baptized member. I want to leave two examples with you this morning. And I want to motivate you this morning. You can see this child again based on your lifestyle. You can see this child again based on living for Jesus Christ and his word. You have started that part. I came to your house because you and your sister wanted to be baptized. And while I was not here, you got baptized. And I said, praise the Lord. And I like how you're smiling. Praise the Lord. But I want to reiterate that the only way you will see this child is when you live and continue to live for Jesus. I'm going to use two examples because I know time is upon us and other persons have an engagement. But other persons have engagement. If I ask the question at this midday hour, how many persons were saved in Noah's ark? I want you to respond to me. How many persons were saved in Noah's ark? It was eight. How many children were saved in Noah's ark? The answer is zero. Why the answer is zero? Because as much as God loves children, as much as they are adorable, if the parents do not live the lifestyle, God cannot save that child. Somebody there with me this morning. There were children in those days, babies in those days, but they did not believe the man of God who was Noah at that point in time. He preached and, and research has shown that there were toddlers like these young ones who were uh, dancing before us. Toddlers believe in that because God was impressing upon them. But their parents told them, no, you are not going there. But the young ones, they were not able to make a decision. So the faith of the parents gave the sentence for them. Not one child was saved in Noah's time. And I go to Sodom and Gomorrah if I ask the question, how many children were saved? The answer is zero. The same principle applies. Daddy, you are finding that child to the back there. If that child supposed to close... Is her eye at this point in time. Your lifestyle will be responsible for that child. So Shelly is what I'm telling you. Just keep on walking with God and you will see your child again. Just keep on living for Jesus and you will see your child again. This is your motivation. If a man come and he's not ready, he's not ready to take you to the altar so that the three of us could come and stand and pronounce you husband and wife. Let him wait because what is important is for you to see your child again. If there are situations and men and women who are leading you, who wants to lead you down the wrong path just to leave you out of the, ch of the kingdom, remember that you want to see your child again. That is your motivation this morning. In Sodom was the same principle. And it will be the same principle when Jesus Christ comes again. There will be little toddlers who can't speak. 
but they are depending on mommy. They are depending on daddy for food. Sometimes when their eyes I cannot even open long time. We used to say, Pastor, that nine days and children's eyes were open, but the older ones know what I'm talking about. But these days they're born and they're watching you in your face just like that. Somebody know what I'm talking about? Pastor Rose, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 I ain't talking about the baby part. Long time, the nine days old with the open the eye. You don't know what I'm talking about. I heard that and I witnessed that. But now children are born. Mommy, they can't say it outside, but inside. And I'm saying, if the principle is there in Noah's time and the principle is there in Solomon and Gomorrah time, it is going to happen. Again. That's the word of the Lord. Shalice, you can't touch her again. You can't smell her again. What will be with you are memories. But what is going to motivate you is living for Jesus. And you have started. And I just want you to continue, my dear. Just continue live for Jesus. The scripture reading says, the wolf shall dwell with the lamb. And just in case you, 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 you are a theology student and you're inside, you just love to read the Bible. And the text sometimes look complicated when the Bible says the wolf shall dwell with the lamb. You know it cannot be now. Because if the wolf dwell with the lamb, my sister, you know what is going to happen. The wolf is going to eat the lamb. The Bible says the leopard shall lie down with the young goat. You know that the leopard ain't going to do that. So it had to be in a distance. You know the Bible says that the calf and the young lion and the fat lion together. My sister, you know that cannot happen in this world. So it's talking about a world that is to come. And it, and it finished the, the sentence by saying, and a little child shall lead them. Shall is what I'm here to tell you again this morning. Yes, Mariah was a sacrifice. But you need to continue to make that sacrifice to see her again. Yes, you may not, you will not, not may not, you will not see her grow up into a fine young woman and probably get married. But the Bible reassures you that if you live for Jesus, the Bible says, if you live for Jesus, when that little child shall lead them, in heaven may knew you will see your daughter again. And I've read in the spirit of prophecy that in the first resurrection, the babies that were separated from their mothers. Listen to me carefully now. At the first resurrection, we call it resurrection morning. Uh, the angel will take that little child out of the first resurrection and carry it to the mother's arms, never to part again. Shelly, I'm seeing you in that number. I am seeing you in that number, my dear. When you come up in the first resurrection, if you die before, or if not, you will come up, in, come up to meet the Lord in the air. The Bible says that the angel will take that child and carry that child, spirit of prophecy, and carry that child into your arms and you will be with that child forever. Never to part again. But what is interesting you will not only see your child, but you will see Jesus face to face. You will not only see your child, but you will see the man who made this possible, Jesus Christ. You will not only see your child, but you will see your child growing up in front of your eyes. Because those children who go to heaven will not remain a child. They will grow up and become big men. And women. Shellis, you are spared. Let's look at the bright side of this. Shellis, you are spared from some of the agonies that parents will go through. You are spared from some of the agonies that fathers and mothers will go through. Yes, fathers and mothers have trained their children and grow them up in the, the, the nurture of the Lord. But yet when they got a little older, they start straying. You are spared from that, my dear. You are spared from looking for your child in places that they are not supposed to be. You are spared from the heartache that some parents are going through right now. Yes, they have tried their best, but the child just decides to go their own way. You are spared. The Bible says 
In Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good. For them that love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. Oh yes, in my mortal mind, I can see just in front of me some of the things that you are spared from. But in God's eye, he has a panoramic view of things that are going on. I'm saying to you this morning, Shelley's. Yes, physically, you have lost your daughter. But once you continue to remain in Jesus, you are going to see your daughter again. I said you are going to see your daughter again. You look like my sister. And I know by God's grace, right now you are my sister twice. I want to reassure you that if you live for Jesus, you are going to see your daughter again. That's my sermon. It's for everybody, but I'm specifically to you this morning. Because I know sometimes when these things happen, people lose hope. And they give up on Jesus. And you will find people coming around you. Samantha, I want you to be close here. Yeah, stay right there. You will find people coming around you, Shalice, and tell you, if God was so good, why you allow your child to die? You will find those people coming around you. But I'm telling you, two texts I want you to remember. The first one, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. I'm training you in here now. And the second one is Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong to God. And just in case they push you a little further, take them to Jesus Christ's life. A sinless man hanging upon the cross. And men coming by the side and taunting, hey, hey. You save others. You cannot even save yourself. If you are really the Jesus Christ that they're talking about, come down from the cross. Yes, you will find people coming around to tell you these things. And it's the devil that is sending them to destroy your faith and confidence in God. But what I want you to tell them, my sister, is God is in control. And for everybody who is in this church today, your faith may be wavering, but I want to reassure you that God is in control. My dear sister, I repeat it again. Live for Jesus and you will see your daughter again. I want to, before Pastor Rose come and pray for the family, I want everyone to bow their head. Loving Father, we thank you, dear God, for your grace and for your spirit. Today is a day with mixed emotions, but we look forward for the day. When you will remove all those mixed emotions. And there will be one emotion. That's the one we are going to use to praise you. Take full control of Shelley's life. And for all the members and the visitors that are here. I pray that God, that those who are going through their trials, those who have lost their faith in God, maybe due to economic times, maybe due to some relative, some male, some female, I pray that God that you strengthen them. And for those who are with young child or children, may you continue to provoke them unto righteousness. 
so they can give their life to you and secure their child's future. This is one of our prayer. In Jesus' name, let everybody say, Amen. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Evangelist Alain, for bringing such words of comfort to this grieving family today. And at this time in our program, it's that moment where we have that special prayer of comfort for the family members. The officiants on the pulpit would join me as we press close to the coffin, the casket. And the family members, I'm asking you kindly to stand family members of this baby I'm asking you to stand and if you want to press close you can do so as we have this special prayer of comfort for the family okay. the evangelist is saying to come so. We're going to sing that song, bind us together, one verse of that song, that wonderful song. Bind us together with chords that cannot be broken, and then we'll go right into this prayer. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with chords that cannot be broken. Sing it together, bind us. Together, Lord, bind us. Together, Lord, bind us. Together with love. There's only one God. There is only one God. There is only one God. There is only one King. There is only there's only one body. There is only one body. So that is why we sing. That is why we together. That is why we sing. Bind us together. Sing the song. Bind us together. Bind them. Bind them together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind the family, bind them, bind them together, Lord. Bind them together, Lord. Bind them together with love. Our heads are bowed everywhere and our eyes are closed. We are praying. Our loving God in heaven, we thank you today for your gift of love. We thank you, God, that amidst all the anger, amidst all the bitterness, amidst all the resentment, amidst all the evil that is found in this world today, there is still a sure gift of love. And Lord, we are confident in the reality. That though we may face pain and sorrow and suffering in this life, that gift of love which is Jesus Christ is there to fill our hearts with love. And Father, we thank you. And we call upon that gift of love, Jesus Christ, right now to embrace this family. That is why we sing that song, bind them together with love. Bind them together with love. Because we are conscious, oh God, that in this time, in this moment, the enemy may have a way of just seeping in the midst of their family, seeping in the midst of their lives, filling their hearts and their minds with doubt and disbelief and sorrow. And as the evangelist said, filling their hearts with all kinds of things. If God is a God of love, then why did he allow this to happen? But Lord, we thank you that you are that precious gift of love. 
And when we see you in all of your goodness, see you in all of your glory, see in all of your mercy, when we see Jesus upon his throne, we understand the reality that all things still work together for the good of them that love Jesus. All things still work together for the good. Now, it doesn't matter what people say or what people think or what they may perceive based on their perception. There is a God of love who may all things well for his children and for that we say thank you and lord we don't want to tarry but all i just want to ask for is this one thing mighty god that you would give them the comfort that they are in need of right now their hearts are broken jesus but we are confident that jesus is still the friend of the brokenhearted and so today oh god envelope them with your love Lord, the mother, oh God, I pray right now that you would touch her. She is going through a special kind of pain, a special kind of suffering. After carrying your baby for, for how many months, uh, and then you lose that child, that mother is going through a pain that nobody else in this room can be able to identify with. And only Jesus, and Jesus alone, can mend her broken heart. So envelope her now, and Lord, I pray, that you bind them together, that the family members, the friends, they would envelope her and they would let her know, oh God, that they are with her through this time, Father. Uh, they are with her through this time. They are with the parents through this time. And all we ask, Lord, is that you comfort them. And we thank you that even the weeping men do for a night. Thank God, joy comes in the morning. This we pray for your comfort, for your peace, and for your love. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you and may you find peace and comfort and love in the arms of Jesus. God bless you. Can we just inform that the daughter has the eulogy and she would like to read it. So at this time, we want to make that um, provision for you, and then we will proceed to the closing exercise. Thank you kindly. Tisha named by her grandmother Iris. She was a fighter from the day she was conceived to the day she passed. The birth of baby Mariah still remains a miracle to doctors and also our family. Can you imagine months without food, water, or even blood in her mother's body? And Nana's heartbeat remained strong. She never stopped fighting for her life. Mariah was strong, vibrant, always excited, and loved laughing. She had the most beautiful smile that anyone could dream of. Calling her by her nickname or singing one of her favorite songs like Clap Your Tiny Hands or Jumpy Jumpy. <laughs> Even something as simple as taking her on small walks in the yard would earn you the biggest smile and tiniest kicks from Otisha. Sunday the 24th of July was the first time I ever got to interact with Nana. We played for hours, and I didn't want to leave her present. There were times when I was away, and we'd all, always, always dream of the day I got to meet her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Baby Mariah will be forever in my heart, and I'm forever grateful that we got to meet on this sad day, Mariah's grandmother, Iris from the U.S., along with my aunt, Charlize, mm -hmm. were making christening arrangements for Nana. Mm -hmm. 
Mariah's beautiful white dress, along with other staff, were already in place, not knowing that tragedy would strike and she would be gone so soon. My baby was loved by many and will forever hold a place in my heart. God knows best and has all the answers to our questions. Rest up, baby. That's very nice. Let's put our hands together. Justin, okay, we want to thank God for the strength that he has given the family and the family members. Even though the tears flow, we know that God is with the, this family and he will continue to be with this family because no one knows better what we go through than God himself. We have a special uh, recorded music that has been chosen for this time. Uh, we will be given the opportunity for those who will want to have the final viewing at the church. Uh, we ask the attendant to please come forward. As you come to view, you can take either my right, your left, in terms of exiting. My left, your right. And uh, we're asking you to please give the final moments to the family, immediate family, for their viewing and uh, for their time of expressing their love. So we ask for the recorded music to be played as we have the viewing at this time. So we ask for, for those at the back to be the first to come and we leave the, the family members for last. So those at the back who will want to come to view, please come at this time and take the two side doors as you make your exit. From here, we go to a place of internment. Thank you very much for your cooperation. There's a 
In your will, that's my strength when I'm with you. Just can't stop getting closer to you. With my mind, I'm renewed and conform to the image of you. There's a peace. Running deep from my soul, my spirit bear witness that I'm a child of a king, and I'm sorry I just can't walk the way I used to. Said the things I used to do. I just can't do them no more. There's a peace running deep from my soul. There's a peace in my soul when I'm with you. There's a peace in my soul when my spirit. Oh. 